welcome you all to the next session on no half series this video is about the design of unsigned array multiplier so in the first part of the video we'll just see what are the basic steps that are involved in a multiplication operation and how we are going to arrive at the hardware part of the array multiplier in the second part of the video we will continue with the propagation delay and the hot complexity that is associated with the unsigned array multiplier generally all multiplications are expensive and slow operations the performance of multiplication problem is actually dominated by the speed of the execution let us now here consider two unsigned binary numbers a and b which are m and n bits wide and we define a as summation i equal to 0 to m minus 1 because it is m bits wide so i write it here as i equal to 0 to m minus 1 ai into 2 to the power i and b is defined as summation j equal to 0 n minus 1 bj into 2 to the power j and we know that multiplication is simply a product of two unsigned binary numbers so here i take a product of a cross b and therefore my final multiplication product p becomes summation i equal to 0 to m minus 1 to summation j equal to 0 to n minus 1 ai into bj into 2 to the power i into 2 to the power j and when I have exponents in terms of 2 to the power i and 2 to the power j, I can add the exponents and that becomes 2 to the power i plus j. Here we concentrate on a 4 cross 4 unsigned array multiplier design. So here for example, I have taken a 4 bit multiplicand and 4 bit multiplier, which is going to give us the partial products. I'll let you know how these partial products are going to be generated and then Accumulating all these partial products will be getting the final product and here I've solved for a particular example and this is the general case So there are basically three steps in the multiplication operation The first one is going to be the partial product generation Which means I'm talking about this part and the second part is a partial product accumulation So that comes in the vertical manner so that is going to be the partial product accumulation and that also includes your final summation to give the final product the partial products are formed from the logical and of the multiplicand with the multiplier bit bj so each and every time we are going to take all the multiplicand bits multiply with each and every bit of the multiplier so that is going to generate us each stage of the partial product so when the multiplier bit is one the partial product is an exact replica of the multiplicand itself so here you can see if the multiplier bit is one it is going to be an exact replica of the multiplicand 1101 1, when the multiplier bit is zero the partial product is a row of zeros so in some cases the partial product array has many zeros which have no impact on the result and it is a waste of result when added so in other words the partial products exist only when the multiplier bit is 1. So therefore, careful optimization of the partial product generation can lead to reduction in the area. When we speak about the area, it is actually the hardware complexity that is associated with the unsigned array multiplier, which we will deal it in the second part of the video. After the partial products are generated, then they must be added. So that part is called as the partial product accumulation. The partial products are accumulated using array of adders since the array of adders are used this particular multiplier is known as array multiplier so array multiplier uses an array of full adders and some half adders now we will proceed with the design of four cross four unsigned array multiplier here i have given an incomplete unsigned array multiplier structure now we will try to complete this particular structure with the basic knowledge of four cross four multiplication so here we understand that for the first step of the basic multiplication process we need to first do the partial product generation and we know that all these partial product generation can happen only with the help of the logical and gates so you can see here each cell contains a two and put AND gate that accepts the multiplicand and the multiplier bits as inputs to form the partial product. Now here I have taken the same example which I have shown previously. 
1101 into 1001 so here i have named each of the multiplicand bits as a0 to a3 and multiplier bits as b0 to b3 now we are just going to give all these multiplicand and multiplier bits in the 4 cross 4 unsigned array multiplier structure now b0 is going to be the first bit of the multiplier for each of the multiplier bit we need to give the inputs of all four bits of multiplicand so here we will feed as a0 a1 a2 a3 similarly we need to proceed for b1 b2 b3 and that will involve all four logical and gates so which in case for four stages we have 16 logical and gates to generate all the partial products now after generating all the partial products we can see here that this a0 b0 is going to be my first bit of the final product so this i will name it as p0 right so here in the hardware structure this a0 b0 is going to be my first bit of the partial product which again i will name it as p0 now that i proceed for the second stage of my array multiplier design here we can see that all the partial products from the first stage have been passed down to the second stage so here also there will be partial products for the second stage so those partial products i have highlighted here which are a0 b1 a1 b1 a2 b1 a3 b1 so all these have arrived at this point and the previous stage results are also accumulated or passed on to the next stage because here you can see here a0 b0 has arrived as the first bit of the final product and a1 b0 has to be accumulated or added along with a0 b1 so here i have two bits so which means we need to understand or analyze which kind of adder has to be utilized here since i have two bits i need not waste with the full adder because full adder is capable of using or adding three bits so here i have only two bits so it is more sufficient for me to have just a half adder so here i am going to fill this block with the half adder so now this half adder will do an addition and will generate the second bit of the final product as p1 so this will be generated but along with the sum what it will generate it will also generate a carry that carry will be propagated to the next stage so now here we can see that we have a sum and a carry so that sum will be named as the second bit of the final product p1 the propagation of carry to the next stage is also shown here now what we need to understand in this stage we have three bits and along with that i can have a carry also so this carry can be either a zero bit or a one bit but anyway i need to add along with this carry so we need to understand what is the hardware requirement for this particular stage here i have four bits i can do three bit addition with the full adder that full adder will generate a sum and that sum can be propagated to the next stage so along with this i will also have a carry for that full adder so that carry can be propagated to the next stage sum will be propagated to this along with this bit so i can use a half adder again so here i will use a full adder for adding these three bits and that sum will be propagated to the next stage i will use a half adder here and the carry of this full adder will be propagated to this stage so that lines i will just draw here here i have marked the next hardware requirement which is full adder and a half adder so now we will proceed for the next stage this full adder has generated a sum that has propagated to this stage and here we have used a half adder because it was only a two bits so here you can see here in this stage i have used four bits so for the first three bits i have used a full adder so in this stage i just had only two bits so i just used a half adder so here this full adder would have generated a sum so along with that i have one more partial product so that i will use it with a half adder now this full adder has generated a carry that i have indicated with this arrow mark and this half adder will also going to generate a sum and carry that sum has been represented as p2 and here also it is denoted and this will also generate a carry so that i will indicate it somewhere here why i have indicated arrays 
now we can again group here so these three bits along with the previous stage carry i need a full adder and again with the previous stage half adder carry again i need a full adder so here i can just occupy with a full adder come full adder now the sum of both these full adders would also have been reached here so here i will have s1 let us say the sum of fa1 and let fa2 uh, produce a sum of s2 so for that again i require to add both these sums again i require a half adder so for this particular stage alone for this particular stage alone i require two full adders and one half adder and this half adder will again produce a sum and that sum is going to be my fourth bit of the final product which is p3 and again all these carries of fa1 fa2 half adder has to be propagated to the next stage and the similar analysis for the next stage so here you can see here here i had in the previous stage i had two full adders which have marked in white highlighter fa1 fa2 and then i had one half adder so here also i have marked two full adders and one half adder all these carries i need not worry it is going to be propagated to the next stage but sums i have to add and that sum only i have propagated to the next stage immediate next stage and i have used two full adders and half adders now all these carries would have propagated which i have marked here with the white arrows the extra carries which have been propagated with one half adder and two full adders now here i have this partial product zero and i have one carry so both these things i can add it with a half adder and then i have one carry and i have partial product and the sum of this half adder will also accumulate so here i can use full adder because i have three bits again the sum of this full adder has to be added and that will again accumulate with three bits so i'm going to use the second full adder so for the stage also i use one half adder here because i have only two bits and here i will have a full adder and a full adder the carries of this half adder full adder and this full adder is propagated to the next stage so here i have indicated with the white arrow lines and this one is indicated with the fifth bit of the final product so here also i have indicated as p4 now to proceed with this stage we have to also include all the carries of the previous stage here i have used three adders one half adder and two full adders so all these carries are propagated to the next stage and here i have these three carries along with two partial products so the first three bits i have used full adder one and that is going to generate a sum and carry carry will be propagated to this stage and sum will be propagated to the same stage so here i will have a sum and along with that i will have one more previous stage carry and one partial product so again i have three bits so i have to use one more full adder so in this particular stage what we are going to use is one full adder and here also i will be using a full adder so the sixth bit of the final product is mentioned as p5 and here also it is known as p5 now we had two full adders in this stage so we will have two carries which are propagated to the next stage so here i had only one partial product one bit of partial product so totally i have three bits so here i'll be using one full adder for my last stage addition so this is how we try to analyze the hardware complexity and here we can mention this sum of full adder as p6 and this will also generate a carry that carry can either be 0 or 1 so that will be p7 so here also we can see that this is going to be p6 and sometimes here we will have p7 since that is 0 here we have not mentioned so you can also write here as 0 so this is how we try to complete the hardware part of unsigned array multiplier so whatever array multiplier dimension is asked either it can be 3 cross 3 or 4 cross 3 you just take an example like this and try to understand the hardware that is involved either it is going to be a half adder requirement or a full adder requirement based on that we can draw this particular structure and fill up whether it is a half adder or a full adder for a 4 cross 4 definitely we will be having 16 nand gates and that there is no change 
even if you take 4 cross 3 or 3 cross 3 based on that the AND gates will change so we will also understand what are the half adder requirements and full adder and how many logical AND gates will be required exactly so that we can verify at the end whether we have designed the structure correctly or not that we will see it in the second part of the video along with that we will see what is the delay that is incurred when we try to use all these half adders and full adders this is the final structure of 4 cross 4 and sine array multiplier to summarize an array multiplier is using an array of full adders and half adders and each cell is going to contain a toe and put logical AND gate that will accept the multiplicand and the multiplier bits to generate all the partial products in each stage and then a full adder is going to be used to add all these partial products to arrive at the final sum and the generation of m partial products requires m cross n 2 bit AND gates and the major area of the multiplier is dedicated for adding the n partial products the hardware complexity will be dealt in the second part of the video and due to the array organization determining the propagation delay of the circuit is not there the partial sum adders are implemented using triple carry structures and therefore the performance have to be optimized by identifying the critical path that critical path analysis propagation delay analysis and the hardware complexity analysis will be dealt in the second part of the video until then Thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.